All right, so I'm back. All right, um, this segment of the same lesson, Trabaviscar, is going to be dealing with bringing out the archaeology. You know, going into the into the records. You know, showing that the Trabaviscar are the so-called Mexicans or the Aztecas. All right, uh, as the scripture says, you know, Book of uh, Revelation, uh, chapter twelve. Is 12 and uh, 15 and the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood now that flood the water as a flood are, are all these lies you know because this white man he spread his lies through the history books archaeology you know and he carried us away in these lies man you know the woman being Israel verse 16 and the earth helped the woman and the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood which the dragon cast out of his mouth. You know, the earth represents the archaeology. You know, the word ar archaeology means study of the, of the earth, of antiquities. Alright, so it says, And the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood. How did, how did the earth swallow up the flood? Because when we bring out these records, right, these archaeological facts, we're swallowing up that flood, all those lies. All right, and swallowed up the flood which the dragon cast out of his mouth. All right, and uh, another scripture comes to mind in uh, the book of Job, the book of Job, chapter 11 and 1 and 2. It says, Should not the multitude of words be answered? And should a man, f and should a man full of talk be justified? It says, Should thy lies make men hold their peace? And when thou mockest, shall no man make thee ashamed? Alright? So, this devil, he spread all these lies, man. So, should, 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 should not you be accounted for your lies? You know, should, should your lies keep our mouths, um, you know, at bay? No, it should not. We should bring out the facts and cut all these lies. Alright? So, this is, uh, this book is called Encyclopedia. American Indian Contributions to the World All right, by Emery Dean Keok and K. Mary Potterfield Alright I'm gonna hit up a few pages in here Let's go to page uh, 23 Remember this is dealing with the uh, Iskarites but, there's, but this deals with all the uh, Indian tribes All right uh, So page 23 No, so I'll page uh, 20, yeah, 23, 24 at the bottom. It says astronomy. It says astronomy is the study of the position and movement of planets, stars, and constellations. Unlike astronomical observers in, in other parts of the world, American Indian astronomers focus on events that happen at the horizon including the rising and settling of stellar constellations, the sun, the moon, and Venus. They use the sophisticated system of astronomy developed independently from that of other cultures, which could calculate celestial events like solar eclipses. They also created calendar systems, complete with corrections that were based on detailed observations of the cycles of the sun and moon. Because the, uh, the word month goes back to the word moon. So the calendar system, the calendar is based on the moon. The reason why this white man, one, one month he'll have 31 days, one month he'll have 28 days, he'll have a leap year, where in February there's an extra day, is, you know, because he follows, he, he totally fucked up everything. Because what does it say in the scriptures? He, he think it to change times. Right? So, the Israelites followed the new moon, you know? When the new moon came, that's the new month, you know, and that's the Sabbath for that month. All right. Uh, it says Indians built structures throughout North and South America that aligned to the planets and the solstices. For example, Casa Rinaconada, a kiva, which is a chamber built by the Anasazi in the in the Chaco Canyon area of what is now New Mexico, about 1100 A.D has irregularly placed 
windows and niches there. Modern astronomers have discovered a line with the light of the summer solstice. Only in the late it's like only in the last decades of the 20th century did researchers discover that the angled walls of a building in Uxmal, a city built by the Maya and the Yucatan between 800 AD and 1400 AD, form sight lines to the rising and settling of celestial bodies including Venus, one of the most important planets in Mesoamerican astronomical observa observations. All right. And um, let's go to page 44 with some more information. All right, this is under uh, the title, subtitle Calendars. All right, I'm going to read here. It says, uh, Mesoamerican calendars were extremely sophisticated and accurate. Archaeologists believe the Maya, whose culture arose about 1500 BC in Mesoamerica, calculated these calendars. The Aztec, whose empire was established in the same region, about 1100 AD adopted them. This Mesoamerican system was com was composed of several calendars, each of which served a, a different purpose. The day count was a 260-day ritual almanac used primarily to time religious ceremonies, name children, and predict the future. So the Maya and Aztec also kept an annual calendar based on the sun, containing 365 days that were arranged into 18 months and of 20 days each this calendar was used to determine the seasons and to schedule events such as market gatherings and crop planting this is the scientific tools the Mesoamerican astronomers used to construct their calendars were shadow casting devices accurate observation and meticulous record keeping in addition to the solar or side reel calendar the Maya devised a lunar calendar this calendar consists of, a, of altering periods of 29 and 30 days in order to compensate for the actual time it took for one lunar cycle, like their solar calendar. It was accurate. Modern ethno-astronomers have not yet discovered its purpose, right? Because these devils, they try, to, they try to seek everything, right? But, you know, a lot of things they can't seek out, man. All right. Um, and then down here. Actually, no, that's dealing with the Inca, which is uh, Asher. All right. Um, yeah, that's dealing with the Asherites. Lord as well, I do a video on them. Um, yeah, so I'm going to go to this other book now. Called uh, The Mayas, Aztecs, and Incas, Mysteries of Ancient Civilizations of Central and South America. All right, by Mark J. Dworkin. And you know, to say this is okay, this is the Canadian Children's Book Center. But they actually got real information on the Aztecs, Incas, and Mayas. Like, I'm talking about Israelite information, you know? All right, and this video in part is to that fucking idiot too, T. Selecchia, all right? Saying that the Mexicans are gooks or whatever. You know they came from the Bering Strait. All right. So you know this is the cut, cut that fucking Edomite, T. Selecchia on Esau's payroll. All right. That's another lie that must be cast down. So I'm gonna go to page uh, 36. And then page 36 it says. It says, Mayan astronomers and mathematicians studied the sun, the moon, and the stars for dozens of generations and made detailed observations of their movements in the sky. In addition, they had very carefully studied the eclipses of the sun and the moon and could predict these as well. One of the three Mayan books that survived the Spanish conquest is called the Dresden Codex, and when it was deciphered, it showed that the Mayan calculation of the lunar month was amazingly accurate. All right, and this uh, these codexes I'm going to go into it later. There was a codex called the Codex Borgier, which was the codexes basically were manuscripts. That's what the word codex means, and these were manuscripts that the Spaniards took and they brought them back to Spain, and a lot of them are actually in the Vatican. But a lot of 
things, a lot of books and stuff they burned because they said it was witchcraft and all this madness, but really it was their history and their culture and they actually had a lot of Israelite heritage in there. And there's one called the Borgir Codex because it was given to the Borgiers. Because if you know anything, Christopher Columbus, he got a sanction from Rodrigo Borgir. That was a pope during the time of um, Christopher Columbus. All right. Um, and that was it in this book. But I'm going to go into the Borgia Codex later on. Um, okay, here's another record called Sailing to Paradise. The Discovery of the Americas by 7000 BC by Jim Bailey. All right. So let's go to page 72. Alright, it says um, here, this is proven tradition recalls that the first Inca arrived at Tiahuanaco after a flood and the same story was told by the Maya. Their great gods arrived from across the Atlantic to escape the flood. In the Valley of Mexico, there was also a pre-Columbian tradition of a flood and of a Mexican Noah called Tapi or Tapai. He was a righteous man who, following God's instructions, built a ship and took on board two of every kind of beast. He even released a dove to find dry land. This resemblance to the biblical story can hardly be a coincidence. Another Mexican legend that bears a significantly close resemblance to a biblical story is the building of an immense tower so high that it touched the sky. This presumption angered the gods and they destroyed the kingdom, which is the Tower of Babel. Alright, um, let's go to page 86. Here they show pyramids because a lot of Mayas and Aztecs, if you know, they, they had pyramids in, in America. And where they and where they get that from? Egypt, because they, they were the ones building that in uh, in Egypt. Where they were the Israelites that crossed the Red Sea. You know? Um, it says Mexico carried the same story of the Great Flood, which they called Katanama Noah, which reconst reconstituted in Semitic Homet claims simply means flood of Noah. Down here, it says the Mexican Nahuas and the Hyksos, which were Israelites, built identical ziggurats and decorated them identically. It says it is worth noticing that Nekosheth was Hebrew for bronze that Adel and Seth were two names for the same God that in the Bible Enoch was the son of Seth may not bronze therefore be the source for the name of the third or fourth largest city in the world at that time Tenochtitlan all right and then um, let's go to page 360 Here it says, when the Spaniards had conquered Mexico and Peru, they were more than a little surprised to find so many of their Christian practices part of the Amerindian religions. William Prescott, the great U.S. historian of the Spanish invasion, comments, one is astonished to find so close a resemblance between the institutions of the American Indian, the ancient Roman, and the modern Catholic. It says he points out that Papa was Mexican for high priest to be compared with our Pope. It says, the Aztecs, like the Greeks, believed in the four ages of the world. Like the Hebrews, they had a belief in the deluge, which is the flood, and a survivor called Kokox. Uh, while the Meh Mehokians believed in a Noah called Tezpi Tezpai. And it was a hummingbird, not a dove, sent out from the boat that returned with the twig. The Mexican temple of Cholula was raised by the giants who escaped the flood, planning to raise the temple to the clouds, but the gods sent fire from heaven to stop them, as in Babylon with the Tower of Babel. Alright, and uh, page 361. It says, The Mexicans held to the doctrine of original sin and baptism, 